Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Assemblywoman Cotty Petri Norris, and she is going to share with us a variety of different things regarding the reopening of California, stimulus checks, lots of stuff that I know you guys have questions on. So, Cotty, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for having me. It is wonderful to connect with you again. Yeah, thank you. And, and, and I know we continue to do our Zoom interviews, and I, I think this is something we're going to be doing for a little while, still going on. So thank you for doing that. You know, let's talk a little bit about some things that I know, you know, our senior community is 55 and over. Some people are still working. Uh, they're looking for their stimulus checks or, or unemployment or whatever they're looking for. Kind of guide us on how the process is working. Let me touch first on the, uh, the federal stimulus checks. So uh, to remind everyone, as part of the Federal CARES Act, a big piece of that included a direct payment to most Americans of $1,200 per adult and $500 per child. Mm -hmm. And uh, that full payment will be received by all Americans who earn $75,000 a year or less, $150,000 per couple, and it gets gradually phased out uh, at $100,000 per person per year. Those uh, stimulus checks, good news is those are going out. Uh, those have been received by 130 million Americans and by you know, millions of our Orange, Orange County residents as well. Okay, so let's, how did they know where to send the check to? Good question. So what uh, what they did was they first based it on uh, people's 2018, or if you filed one, 2019 tax returns. And if the IRS has direct debit information for you, an electronic transfer was made into the bank account that they have on record. If they didn't have a bank account on record for you, then they mailed it to the address on record. And there's also been some questions about, well, you know, what if I've got social security or what if I'm a veteran, I'm not required to file a tax return, what do I need to do? So if you are a social security recipient or if you're a veteran, then uh, beginning just last week, they have begun to automatically send checks to you as well. If you don't receive social security, you're not a veteran, but you still didn't file taxes, then what you need to do is, is visit the IRS website, irs.gov, to claim your check. And uh, in order to, to track your check and kind of see where it is in the pipeline, we've got, we've got a website address there, irs.gov slash coronavirus slash get my payment. And uh, the last thing that I, I would, would add is that if you think that you should be getting a check, if you've done everything you can, please don't, don't hesitate to reach out either to my office or to the office of our Congresswoman, Katie Porter. We can help you and ensure that everyone is getting the, the money that, uh, that they deserve and that they need right now. Well, that's great because, you know, I've been talking to a variety of different people of all ages and they're a little concerned and, and a little confused. And I know this is a, you know, it's a new process. It's everything's been, you know, happening right away. And I know that it takes time to kind of work through the bugs and things. Um, let's talk a little bit about somebody who might have their own business, because I know that's a bit different. I mean, maybe not so much the stimulus check, but, you know, filing for unemployment versus having your own business? What do you do differently? Well, another piece of, of good news that was part of the CARES Act is that what we have been able to do for the very first time is expand unemployment insurance to non-traditional workers and to small business owners. So that includes gig workers, small business owners, contractors, part-time employees. And they are all eligible for a, a new program that's called the uh, pandemic unemployment assistance program mm -hmm. and that has uh, just recently it was was actually last week it was began to be rolled out here in California um, again to apply for this you, you go to EDD is the website um, so Google EDD and you'll be able to, to find that um, once again if you're having trouble filling in your application if you haven't gotten feedback from EDD my office is here to help, so don't hesitate to reach out to us. It's, uh, our number is 
seven four. Because um, one thing I that I, I want people to to know is since March twelfth, uh, so just two months ago, mm-hmm. we have had more than three million Californians file for unemployment for for this pandemic unemployment assistance program, mm-hmm. and uh, it is it's pretty staggering. We know that people are hurting and. We're doing everything that we can to ensure that people are getting the resources and then the help that they need right now. Right. Well, that's that's good to know, and and thank you for offering the uh, the assistance because I think people do still have questions. And you know, businesses themselves are are also hurting, and I know that there's payroll assistance and there's a variety of things out there in which are are in place. So I'm assuming that anyone would be able to call your office, even if they do have a business that they're trying to you know keep. Absolutely. Uh, yes, we are, we are here to help. We can connect folks with small business resources. Uh, the, the PPP program has been a big area of focus. We also have some state loan guarantee programs that we're beginning to roll out for some of the smaller businesses that maybe didn't qualify for the PPP program. And we're also able to, to, connect, uh, to connect our small business owners with the Small Business Resource Center, which really can can provide some help and some guidance and help people to navigate what is, as we continue to say, truly an unprecedented crisis for California and and for our for our entire country. Great. Well, good to know. All right. Well, let's talk about the reopening of California. It's on everybody's mind. We we do talk to our residents and we we consistently refer them to you know, the governor's plan uh, where, where it talks so much about different types of stages. And I understand that we're, we're approaching the stage two now. So maybe you can give us a recap of stage one and then where we're at right now. Well, for the past two months, I know we've spent a lot of time talking about the importance of flattening the curve. And California and 40 million Californians have taken truly extraordinary steps to do just that. And because of the actions of, like I said, 40 million Californians who are staying at home, who are practicing distancing, we have been able to flatten the curve. And so the good news is that we are now moving from sort of phase one, which in phase one, we were really just had our essential businesses open and we were preparing for the potential surge of COVID-19 patients. And a lot of our other businesses have been shuttered. Uh, so, and what we've been able to do now as we start to move into what we're calling phase two is safely and responsibly start to open our lower risk businesses. And uh, the governor just uh, made this announcement last week and we'll be announcing additional details uh, this week. So um, I think we're all looking forward to looking forward to that. and. I think really encouraged that we've made good progress so far. Absolutely. I mean, we look at the numbers on a regular basis here in Orange County and Laguna Woods only has eight cases and that's been the same for about, I think probably about a week or two weeks now. So obviously they're doing their part and and people just all around Orange County are doing their part. And uh, we we did speak with... uh, our supervisor last week, and, and she also said that we're doing a great job. We talked to the Orange County Health Department. They're very happy with what we've done here in Orange County as well. And as you mentioned, all of California, because I think we were expecting huge numbers and it just didn't happen. Absolutely, and I think that is a, a, you know, a reason to certainly, um, I think, be really encouraged about where we are now. I think we also need to acknowledge that as we start to reopen, it's not, it's not, as the governor said, it's not just flipping on a light switch. Um, we, it's not just a return to normal because we do still have a, an increase in COVID-19 cases, both in the state and across the county. So the steps that we're taking will be gradual, will be responsible, and will ensure that we can maintain public health and safety while starting starting to reopen. And uh, the, the businesses that are, are going to be part of the, the, the first part of phase two, which actually reopened just this past weekend, okay. are retail or retail establishments for, uh, for curbside pickup yeah. and uh, manufacturing businesses and uh, the warehouses and logistics businesses that really support both of those sectors. Um, and then we're expecting, 
we're expecting this week, very soon, for the governor to, to share some additional details about the reopening of offices, of shopping malls, outdoor museums, and uh, dine-in restaurants, all with all with added precautions, all with, with new practices, and all ensuring that we continue to, to be safe and to flatten the curve. Exactly. And you know, one thing that's going to be very difficult for many businesses is they're going to have to uh, spend some money to, you know, make their facility more accommodating to what we're dealing with today. So I know like some plexiglass is going up in many of the front offices of businesses. Uh, if you're greeting people, um, you know, that kind of thing, or, or moving desks or having different separations and things like that. Is there, you know, for, for, are you seeing that is something that's kind of playing out with many of the businesses they have to sort of revamp what they're doing? Absolutely. Um, like I said, it's it's not a return to normal. There will be a, a kind of new normal um, where we have to take safety precautions uh, that, that that didn't exist three months ago, um, and that's going to be an important part of ensuring that we can safely reopen. And one thing that that we are are working hard to do, both at the state level and also at the county level, is to make kind of the process of navigating this reopening for our small businesses as easy as possible. So codifying best practices, sharing that by industry, giving people a playbook so that as we're navigating this transition, we don't ask all of our small businesses to reinvent the wheel. Exactly, good. Uh, you know, I, I would like to touch a little bit on the, the beach closure. We did talk with um, Supervisor Lisa Bartlett about it, but you know what, from your perspective, you're a little closer up there in terms of understanding you know, Governor Newsom's ideas. And, you know, that beach closure thing really, it, it took a lot of people by surprise. And then there were protests and, you know, it was just, it was kind of crazy. And then he reopened. So what do you think he was thinking when he reopened? I mean, what, what changed his mind? I think that, you know, we know for so many of our residents, for so many of us, our beaches really are a respite, such an important outlet for with physical exercise and just for our mental health, which is more important now than ever. And I certainly think that Governor Newsom uh, understood and does understand that. Um, he took the step to close Orange County beaches. So I think that you know, he, like a lot of our Orange County residents, was really concerned when we, we saw photos of overcrowded beaches, of people that weren't actually practicing distancing and it didn't look like it was safe and responsible. So his goal all along was to ensure we were able to keep beaches open here in Orange County and all across the state in a way that is safe, that's responsible, and it flattens the curve. So um, you know, I immediately got to work with, with Supervisor Bartlett, with our local mayors, with the Secretary of Natural Resources, Cal OES, and with our public health officials to ensure that we could develop and implement a plan that would enable us to safely and responsibly reopen our Orange County beaches. And I'm really pleased to say that that is what we have been able to do. Yeah, it's great. And, and many people are very pleased. Are all of the beaches in California open? Um, so a number of them are open under uh, similar restrictions to what we have here in terms of active recreation. Mm -hmm. um, I think some local communities have decided to to be even stricter and to, and to close their beaches. Uh, I know Los Angeles County, for example, their beaches are still closed altogether. Oh, okay. I think that most beaches in California are open with the same kind of restrictions, limitations, and supervision that we have here in Orange County. Okay, and then uh, what about parks? Do you know anything about the parks yet? The state parks? Yeah. Yes, yeah, the state parks. So. Uh, our state parks uh, continue to be open, but the, the parking lots continue to be closed. That is an ongoing conversation with the, the Secretary of Natural Resources and his team and our public health folks. Again, as we look at the steps to reopening California, and we talk about reopening businesses in a phased way, I expect we'll be making the, those same shifts uh, when we look at state parks and, and other resources. 
Great. Yeah. I mean, there's so many spaces and so many different areas mm -hmm. that you have to take into consideration. I, I can tell it's just a very tedious process. So thanks for working on all of that and, and trying to open it back up. I mean, who knew we would ever be in this situation? Right. Right. It well, is, uh, it, it has been, it's an extraordinary time. It's an unprecedented crisis. And um, like I said, I think for so many of us being able to, to go outside to walk our dog, whether that's in a park or on the beach, it's it's the thing that is keeping us sane right now. So I'm I'm really pleased that we're able to do that. Yeah, we're all a little tired of being in our house for eight weeks. <laughs> right, right, it's crazy. Right. Okay, so right. let's talk. Let's talk a little about some resources that you have. Obviously, you gave your phone number and your contact information for you. What else would you like to share with our viewers? Well, I want to highlight uh, a couple of just key resources that are available for seniors right now. Uh, the first is Meals on Wheels Orange County, which provide healthy, nutritious, three meals a day for seniors who, who need that help and support. Um, I also want to highlight the Orange County Office on Aging. So they will be, they administer a number of programs. They'll also be uh, responsible for the Great Plates restaurant delivery program that uh, you may have talked about with, with Supervisor Bartlett. We'll be getting that online here in Orange County in, in I believe, two weeks time. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can reach out to the Orange County Office on Aging. And um, the Institute of Aging, their friendship line is another terrific resource for our area seniors. Um, and 211, I think we've talked about that before, 211 is a terrific one-stop shop. If you need help understanding what's available, how to navigate these resources, how to get connected, 211 is a great place to go. And as I've said, you can, can also reach out to my office. Uh, you can find us online. Um, the easiest way to find us online is to Google Cotti, C-O-T-T-I-E, or pick up the phone. Our, uh, our office number is 949-251-0074. And we're here to help. We know that this is an incredibly difficult time for, for so many of us. And uh, we, we can and we will get through this together. Thank you so much. I mean, it's, it's like you said, it, it's very tough to navigate everything. And I think you've been very helpful in help identifying differences and the different types of resources that uh, our community can go to. So I really appreciate that. Well, thank you again. I hope to catch up with you in a few weeks and we'll have an update. Thank you, Lisa. Always good to catch up with you. Thank you so much. All right. We'll talk to you again. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this.